Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2019 Buick Enclave, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the draw tight max frame trailer hitch receiver. Now what I really like about this hitch compared to some of the others is that when we're not using it, we're going to be able to hide it using the factory access panel. And when we put that in place, you won't even be able to tell that the hitch is there. Another thing that I really like is that it has this electrical bracket already connected to our hitch. And that's going to make mounting any of our wiring extremely easy and convenient. Now our hitch is going to give us some pretty decent clearance. The edge of the receiver tube is going to sit just right beyond our back bumper. And that should work pretty well with most folding accessories. Now many Enclave owners plan on using their vehicle to do a little bit of everything. So whether you plan on using your hitch for accessories like a bike rack or cargo carrier, or even doing some towing, this is gonna be a good all around hitch. And since it is a class three and has a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, the accessories you can get to work with your hitch are more or less endless. It is going to have a reinforced collar for extra strength. And it's also going to have the standard size 5 ace pinhole. Now keep in mind, it does not come included with a pin and clip, but if you need one, you can find it here at eTrailer. It's going to have loop style safety chain openings, which are big enough and open enough to use just about any size hook that we might have. And if you do plan on doing a little bit of towing, I would recommend some trailer wiring. That way your trailer lights will work as you go down the road, keeping you safe and legal. Now the hitch is going to have some pretty impressive weight capacities. As far as a maximum tongue weight rating goes, it's gonna be 750 pounds or the amount of weight pushing down on our hitch. And that's gonna work perfect for those one to four bike racks and pretty much any accessory available. As far as a maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 5,000 pounds, the amount of weight pulling on our hitch. So that's gonna be the weight of your trailer plus anything you might have on it. Now this hitch can be used with the weight distribution system, which is a separate component but keep in mind, when you are using that, your weight capacities will remain the same. It is always a good idea too, to check with your Buick's owner's manual to make sure you can pull that much weight. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of measurements. And you're gonna use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 19 and a half inches. And you're gonna use that to figure out if you need a ball mount with either a drop or a rise. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it's going to be about three inches. And you're going to use that to figure out if any folding accessories you might have can be stored in the upright position without contacting the bumper. Now since the hitch is hidden, the installation is going to be a little more involved and some of our customers had some minor issues along the way. But we'll go ahead and walk you through how to put it on now. To begin our install, we're first going to open up our hatch. We're then going to have two plastic caps that we need to pull off to expose some fasteners underneath. I'm just going to use a pick to do that, however you can use a flathead screwdriver as well. Just kind of peel them down. And then we're going to remove both of those 7 millimeter screws. I do want to point out anything that we do over here on this side, we're going to repeat on the other side. And then here at the edge of our bumper, we're gonna have one more fastener that we're gonna to need to remove, and we'll do that using a T20 Torx bit. Now inside of our wheel well liner, here at the edge, we're gonna have four T15 fasteners that we need to remove. With those screws removed, we can then peel back our wheel well liner. And right up here, we're going to have a seven millimeter bolt that we need to take out. Now moving underneath the vehicle, we're gonna have two T15 fasteners that we need to take out. I have one right here and one right here. And while we're underneath the car, 
later on, we're going to actually lower our exhaust a little bit. So what I'm going to do is use a strap and run it from side to side just to help support the exhaust a little bit. Now with an extra set of hands, we can remove our fascia. We're going to start at the corner of our wheel well and work towards the center so you can carefully pull it away from the vehicle and the tabs will release. You just keep working your way all the way along. And once we have it off, you may or may not have some electrical sensors that you need to disconnect. However, in our case we do, over here on the driver's side. To disconnect it, you'll have a red tab. You push that back away and then push down on that center tab to disconnect our electrical. Once that's out of the way, we can set our fascia off to the side, that way it doesn't get damaged. Now we can remove our bumper beam nuts up here on top first. I'm gonna use a 15 millimeter socket to take those up. Now once we have them completely off, what I like to do is just take one and just loosely get it started, maybe a couple of threads. That way when we remove the rest of the bolts holding our bumper beam on, it doesn't fall off on accident and we'll just have a little more control to take it off. And then we could come down here and remove these two 15 millimeter bolts. Now keep in mind, these are also not only holding our bumper in place, but they're also holding our exhaust up. So when I take these off, before I take the second one out, it is a decent idea to kind of just help support it with your hand a little bit. Now we're going to support our bumper beam, take off the two nuts that we left on hand tight, pull the beam away from the car, and we'll set this off to the side. Now before we put our hitch into place, I'd just like to point out the attachment points that are going to secure it. We're going to reuse the four attachment points here, as well as the two holes in the bottom of the frame rail. We're going to use a technique to get our hardware in place once we have the hitch in. Now we can take our hitch and slide the tabs into the frame rails. Push it against the back of the car. And then we can just use our factory nuts up top here and just secure one on each side, hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself while we work on getting the rest of the hardware in. Once the hitch is supporting itself, we'll put on the other factory nut on the top studs. And then we can snug all those down. Now we can use a fish wire technique here on the bottom of our frame rail to get our hardware into place. So what we're going to do is take the coiled end of our fish wire and starting with this hole close to the front, I actually like to go maybe about 10 inches down on the fish wire and just bend it like that. It'll make it getting in a little easier. We'll take that coil bend and we're going to put it in the hole and push it towards the back of our car. And that's actually going to go to come out of an access hole here in the top of our hitch. Now, if it doesn't come right out, you may have to reach in and feel around for it. Then you can pull that coil end out through that access hole. Now what we're going to do is take one of our spacer blocks, put that over the coil end. We're going to take one of our carriage bolts and thread that into the fish wire. Now we can feed that hardware back through the hole into the frame rail. And pull on the other end. get our hardware to drop through. I'm going to use that same technique for this hole as well as the two holes on the other side. Now we can carefully remove our fish wires. And secure the other end of the bolt. Now what we're going to use is a conical tooth washer. And you want to make sure that the teeth on the washer are going to face up towards the frame. 
Then we're just going to use a regular nut to tighten it out. Do that same thing for the three remaining bolts that we fish fired. And with all those hand tight, we can now use a three quarter inch socket to snug them down. Now before we put our exhaust back into position, for the time being, we're going to use a torque wrench to torque down the four frame rail bolts. You can find that torque spec in your instructions. So now we can hold our exhaust back up and line up the holes in the hanger with the holes in the hitch into the body. Now we're going to use the included hardware to secure it of a bolt and a smaller conical tooth washer. Once again, make sure the teeth are going to face the hitch. So put it on like that. And kind of lift our exhaust up. You might have to kind of wiggle it a little bit to get everything to line up. Get a few turns started on it. Do the same thing for this hole. Now with our bolts hand tight, we can go ahead and snug them down. And now, once again, we'll use our torque wrench to tighten all of the remaining hardware to the amount specified in our instructions. Now with our exhaust supported again, we can go ahead and remove our safety strap underneath. All right, now we can go ahead and put our fascia back into place. One thing I do want to point out, don't forget to hook your electrical connector back up, push it into place, push the red tab back down, and you're good to go. We'll get everything lined up. And push our fascia back into place. We can reinstall all of our fasteners the same way that we removed them. And that'll do it for our look at and our installation of the Draw Tight Max Frame Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2019 Buick Enclave.